Hi everyone, and welcome back to our Plotly series. In this episode, we're going to be continuing advancing our knowledge and use of Plotly, working toward more advanced visualizations and plots. For this, we are going to incorporate a data set in this episode, as we have worked with random data and random data generation up until this point, but being able to harness the power of a data set and transform it into analytical and visualization purposes is essential for your roles in data science, machine learning, business practices, and much more. You need to be able to work with your own data. And for this, we're going to be working with the player unknowns battleground or PUBG data set. And we're going to be working with it to compare the wins and rounds played to eventually build towards this visualization. And the data set can be found in the following link that I will show you in a moment. And I will also include it with the available files and Jupyter notebook. If you want to grab the file for the data set, you can download it from Kaggle. You can find it here. I'm also going to include it with the video and the Jupyter Notebook again, but let's jump right into our Jupyter Notebook. And now we are on episode three. I have all the cells currently run. So if you need to go through and run the cells, we'll do some cleanup towards the end of the series because our notebook is a bit disorganized, but that's no problem right now. We're on episode three and we're going to get started here. Okay. As you may see here, we have an import statement to start. If you do not have pandas installed on your machine, you can either use pip or conda to install it. You can use the pip install pandas command. You can also launch the anaconda navigator, go to the environments tab, search for pandas in the packages and install it into your environment. When we have that set up. You can launch the Jupyter notebook. When you're on the main page, you have created a file in Jupyter Notebooks. You will also see the upload option. You can upload the CSV there. And we're going to use the pandas.read CSV to read the CSV in to create a data frame, calling the data frame PubG. I have this commented out here for visualization purposes. Sometimes when you're working with pandas, you can use the data frame.head command to visualize, or you want to see how the data is structured. It's just a simple method of doing it. We're also applying PD to numeric with data frames and CSVs. You might have other type of values. We want to work with numeric data here. We're using PD to numeric. We're also setting a new data frame name here. And finally, we also are calling the dot head because I don't want to use all the visualization or excuse me. I don't want to use all the values coming up. I only want to use 10 because the data frame is or the data set is pretty large for this scatter plot that we're going to go into in a moment. I only want to use 10 for a simple visualization demonstration. So we're using the DF creating a new every time we give a name. It helps because we won't modify the original so we can always use it for a reference. We're using the DF new so it's a new data frame PUBG, and we're taking the 10 values. We have the following line commented as well here, and we're getting to our scatter plot for this scatter plot. It's going to be very brief. Just please think of it in terms of working with Plotly, how really the plot layout is going. But for this, we've already referenced the head call on the data set. But to give you an example, it's just a very useful way of visualizing the data. So it allows you if you're working with and maybe you don't remember a column name or you want to see how the data is structured, you can call the header on the specific amount that you want to see again here using 10, just a quick way of visualizing the data. So I'm going to go and comment this again and run that. And here for the scatter plot, we are familiar with the plotly layout, at least in starting to set things up. We have our trace with our go objects. We already have that imported from earlier. We've referenced the scatter plot. We're using X as the new DF new PUBG. So the data frame and we're accessing the specific column of data. We want these solo rounds played. We're using again, same data set the Y with the solo wins. We can give it a name. We can have the layout for the title, the color reference, the legend, and finally the figure to actually plot the figure, the go reference. Again, the object is go from plotly the figure we have our data set to our trace since we have our trace as our data set. And finally, we have to plot it simply calling the figure to plot it. And the takeaway here is the main structure of just kind of importing the data and getting familiar with how to import the data and access specific columns within the data frame. You can really disregard this scatter plot in the sense of we can see that it's a little confusing with the connected lines. We've worked with scatter plots earlier above and they are more clear cut and familiar. This one we are working and it has the lines connecting the scatter plot. 
but we're going to actually work with the bar plot because we want to make a very clear and concise and easy to read and interpret visualization. Now we can see the values here. It's not that we can't interpret it, but there are other methods and other types of plots within Plotly that are more geared as the bar chart that we're going to get into that are going to suit our data better. The first thing we're going to do to set up our new bar chart, since we're working with pandas, it makes it so simple to create more data frames from an original because then you can modify your new data frames. you always have that original as reference. Let's set a new one. So we're working with a bar chart. Let's call it our data frame bar for PUBG. We'll set it equal to our PUBG original, but we want more here just because we're working with the bar chart. Let's run it as the following. We originally had 10 for this quick scatter plot analysis. And one thing that's nice about Plotly, as we've seen already, you can always have your reference points to calculate it if you scroll over. Let's jump back down here. We have our data frame set and we can start building our bar chart. So let's build our trace. We want our trace, our first trace equal to go the type of chart we're building, the bar chart. And we're going to set this here. We're going to set our X equal to DF. Remember referencing our data frame bar PUBG. And then here we need to access the data that we want to use. So for this one with the bar chart, we're going to compare the rounds played, the solo rounds played to the solo wins. So the first one, we can use the player name and be careful when you are typing this out because it is case sensitive. We can add our comma. We're going to bring that down. Y equal to, we actually want a space, DF bar underscore PUBG referencing again, the data frame and the data that we want to grab here solo rounds plate if you ever need to reference it again you can always call the header the df bar pubg dot head and then the value that you want to visualize it to see how the data frame is constructed after we close this we can also have just to have it organized equal to rounds plate we have a little space here and we have that close so we can run our trace our trace one all right and now we want to set our trace two similar fashion so we can actually grab this let's keep it in the same cell let's do trace two equal to our go dot bar remember the we imported let's scroll up if we can find it the graph objects as go for the structure of Plotly, we're using the bar chart. We're setting here for trace two. Let's use the player name and solo win. So we can keep the player name. So we're looking to compare. And we also want to run the comparison for solo wins in PUBG. Y equals our DF PUBG. Our name we have to change as well because we're looking for wins here. So we have our traces set. We can run the cell again. Everything should be good. And now we can actually call the data and the plot for our visualization. Now, since we have to set our data now, you can see that we have two traces. We have trace one and trace two. So essentially we'll be setting our data equal to trace one, since we have the data within trace one and trace two, and also trace two. But for this type of bar chart, since we're working with a bar chart, we want to call the layout equal to go, well, I want a space, go dot layout and the bar mode to be a grouped bar chart. So we want bar mode equal to grouped. So a group to be correct right there. Let's return and finally call our figure to plot the figure. We want our figure equal to go dot figure. Data is going to be set to our data, which is trace one. That will be important and trace two. So let's have our data equal to data, our layout parameters within Plotly equal to layout. And finally, to actually plot it, we need the iPlot. Again, we're working in Jupyter Notebooks here, the figure, and you can give it a file name. We can call it the grouped bar. And now we can run it. Let's click that. And there you have it. We have a very clean and as you've seen working through this, it's starting to become pretty repetitive and simple. Again, we're going to keep scaling up, so it is going to become a little more complicated. But 
the great thing about this is if you hover over this, you can see that you already have those values for the comparison. You don't have to really strain to see what the values are. We can actually see the rounds played and wins if we're scrolling through any of these and it does the it pulls the numbers for you. So it's a powerful analysis. Plotly is fantastic for it. I'm a big fan of bar charts for this type of comparison. And now you should be more comfortable importing data with pandas and getting it set up, at least in the sense of being comfortable with importing the data using pandas with the CSV and then accessing the data frame or creating a data frame and accessing the data to plot it. It's a pretty straightforward process. The more you work with it, the more comfortable you're going to be. Also, before I forget, and I should have brought this up earlier, the graph is going to fit the default sizes before we have to actually go in and customize and change any settings within the graph to accommodate certain amounts of data. Now, this bar chart, since we have 100, sometimes I go and work with just specific set round numbers while we're building to make it easier, you know, 110. But we can see if we run rerun this graph, if let's say we can scale it down to, let's say 20. So we want the top 20 here and it's an even more cleaner if we're looking to just have a few specifics if you want to scale it up scale it down you can work with other amounts of data so we can also try we'll go with 30 let's rerun it now you can test those if you would like it helps to visualize the data and the plot is only going to fit the default amount on the graph before you get into customizations just a note and something to keep in mind when you're working with Plotly or in general, really trying to plot with anything, whether it's Plotly, Seaborn, uh, Matplotlib, you know, it's going to only plot a specific set of data before you get into customizing and settings and scaling up or down. On a last and final note, I wanted to give you an example of some of the power or the options of customizations with Plotly. I know we are working on scaling up. We finally got to the bar chart and we're going to progress in the upcoming lectures. But a quick example and demonstration since the NBA season has started. And I think that this is a great example of the use of Plotly, although it is using random data. And I know we're moving away from using random data, but this example quickly shows how we can set our X data. So the names of specific players within the NBA generating our random data again with our Y data setting our specific color layout within the visualization. We have our traces, our customizations with the layout as well, and our plotting of the figure. Now, it's not to focus on the specifics, but the power and the customization options within Plotly. Now we can see specific things calculated, you know, the max, median, um, lower fence, and min. And if we actually click on the export to Plotly, and in the upcoming series, in the next lecture, we're going to get into moving the Plotly or bringing the Plotly visualization online. So if you click on the export to Plotly, it should open up a page. Now, once this loads, you will have the option on further customizations and you can also see the layout, the structures, the data generated and other variables within Plotly. We're gonna get into this again in the next lecture coming up, we're gonna get into moving the plot online and we'll explore it further. We're gonna leave off here so if you have any questions, any comments, ideas for Plotly, please feel free to share them. As always, please subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It is a great way to stay up to date with what's going on in the industry. Thanks for staying with me, and I will see you in the next lecture.